Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. Just keep going and don't ever quit. That was one of the points I made Early on in this series, if you're going to make it count, you got to look at eternity. And boy, have I been looking at eternity in this series. But you also have to have this about you. You will not quit no matter what. And he that has begun a good work in you, he will be faithful to complete it in Jesus' name. And some of you, he's been speaking to you since you were really before you were born in your mother's womb. You didn't have maybe the ability to recall that and remember that. But he was with you, the Bible says in your mother's womb, and he's called you by his name for such a time as this. And every one of you is important to the kingdom of God. Your light is important. Your influence is important. And there are others that are going to read your life as a Bible. You have to ask yourself, what is it that they see when they read your life? Oh, I pray that when people see my life and they read my life, they're pointed to the king, (laughs) the real reason for this season. He made it count. When you think about everything, that God did to bring His Son. Told about it for centuries before He was here. Sent angels to warn the shepherds. I I was going to play a video, but it just didn't really sync up with me, but I got tickled. The skit guys have a new video out about the angel that, or the shepherd that missed out on the angels that were singing. He went to go get some coffee (laughs) and some boba tea. And he came back and he missed the angels singing and all the other shepherds were just like frozen in place in awe. And he said, I always miss out. And one of the shepherds said to him, you may not have been here when the angels were here, but now the king is here. And he's here for all who will call upon his name. Isn't that good news? Last night I was asleep. And your spirit never sleeps, and all I could hear all night long is we, are, we have entered a season of proving. We've entered a season of proving. We've entered a season of proving. This is just echoed inside of me all night long. I said, yes, Lord, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it. So it's hot off the press this morning. His man doesn't live by bread alone, but by out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Did you know there are words proceeding out of the mouth of God this very moment? And you have to have ears to hear. Say this, give me ears ears. to hear you, you. Almighty God. God. If you're going to make this life count, you're going to have to make it through the proving of the Lord. I want to repeat that so you catch what I'm saying. If you're going to make this life count, you're going to have to get a passing grade When the Lord comes to prove you and test you. Some of these folks' testimony I've been reading and hearing, and not reading, but listening to, that have gone to heaven and some that have gone to hell have really, really, to me, confirmed that I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit to preach to you about make it count. I had this in my spirit already, but boy, I've really been on, on this and And there are so many people that face the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and think they're going to make it, and they're shocked to find out they're not. One man was a police officer for years in New Orleans. He was a sheriff of his county. He was a pastor. He was a teacher in a Bible school. He and his wife took in 32 children that were abused and and helped them, help foster them into adulthood. That's, that's a man that you don't look at and think, well, this guy is a flake. He, he would even take his PA system and go witness down on the corners of all the communities and preach. He was a street preacher also. But he had an aneurysm behind his stomach burst, and he died for 15 minutes. He was clinically dead. Heart stopped beating. He was in eternity. 
And he passed through what he calls the veil. I'm not here to preach all of it today. I just got to tell you this because it's burning in me. He said, all of us are going to pass that veil. And he said it, and his weights carried so, his words carried so much weight. He talked kind of without much enthusiasm, but man, it impacted me. He said, you're all going to go through that veil. It's the valley of the shadow of death. It's what's between this life and eternity. He said, it's lonely feeling, very lonely. It was dark. And he saw one piece of what looked like uh, ticker tape floating down. And said, it's appointed unto man once to die. That's all he could see. He said, I don't know how I could see it. It was so dark. It was so lonely. But I knew this was my moment. And once I passed this veil, there was no coming back. But the Lord immediately brought to his mind Hezekiah asking for his life to be prolonged. So he asked the Lord to prolong his life. You have to go watch the rest of the story. I'm not here to tell it, but I'm here to let you know. Eternity's a breath away. Here's what stuck out to me. He said this. I didn't plan on dying that day. I was running for sheriff and thought I was going to win. Had a lot of things going on in life. I did not think that was going to be my last day. And all of us humans are geared like this. We've all been to I don't know how many funerals, how many memorials, how many celebrations of life, whatever we call it. And, and we go to it and we always think, well, that's sad that was them, but it won't be me. But let me tell you, friend, it's coming for all of us. And every single person that's under the sound of my voice is going to wish that they had given the Lord more. There's nobody under the sound of my voice that's going to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and say, well... I was too radical for you. I took it too far for you, Lord. Because none of us ever have, none of us ever will give the Lord too much of our life. We owe Him everything. Well, if we're going to make it count, you're going to have to know about the proving of the Lord. Let me show you what I mean in the Bible. Say, thank God for the Word. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Let's dig in this morning. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let no man deceive you with vain words. I would say this, with eternity in mind, you need to know these kind of scriptures. Let no man deceive you with empty words, for because of these things. Now, the things are listed in the previous verses. I don't really believe it's my assignment today to preach all those. You do need to read them. It's sins of the flesh, fornication, lying, homosexuality, and many other sins are listed in the list up above this. And he says, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Now there's a whole lot of Christians, there's a whole lot of social media posts, there's a whole lot of preachers that make it sound like this verse is null and void. But my friends, this is up, sitting upright in your New Testament. God telling you that if you're a child of disobedience, wrath is your future. Your best days aren't ahead if you're in rebellion. Your best days are ahead if you obey. So how's your attitude today about obeying God? See, most of you are excited about receiving a gift, maybe excited about giving a gift. I'm excited about both, to be honest with you. But I've got to be honest Nothing matters near as much as, am I obeying what you want me to do, Lord? You have to know this. You've stepped into a church where this man cares more about what God thinks than what the public thinks. Obviously. It's pretty obvious. And so, you're bound to hear opinions of people and what they think. But what does God think about your life? You see, people's wrath is nothing compared to God's wrath. God's wrath is on another level. And God has made a way so that you don't have to experience it. Because let me tell you, God has set this thing up, and God's wrath is more sure than your next breath if you're disobedient. Let no man deceive you. See, people are going to try to deceive you and say, oh, now he's up. Wow, what's wrong with you? You don't need to hear that. That's scary. It's too serious. Well, we laugh a lot around here if you hadn't noticed already today. And you need to laugh every day of your life. We can laugh in the Holy Spirit and we can take a warning at the same time. And I'll tell you, there's going to be a day where God pours out his wrath unhindered and you do not want to be here for that day. He says right here in verse 7 of Ephesians 5, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Yes, I'm reading out of King James today if you didn't notice. Hey, you, don't be a partaker. 
with those what? Empty words, men that deceive, and all the people that do the things listed up above that in Ephesians chapter 5. So there it is, a command from the commander, from heaven. Do not be partakers with them. For verse 8 says, you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now really pay attention to verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You need to know these three things. God is a good God. We've sang all about it this morning in case you missed the memo. (laughs) He has been good to me. Has he been good to you? Somebody raise your hand and say, thank God for his goodness. Go ahead and say, thank God for his righteousness. And thank God for his truth. I want to emphasize those three things to you. The fruit of the Spirit operates because of the goodness of God. And because of the righteousness of God that he's given to you. And because of the truth of God that he's given to you through his word. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. You're going to have to live in truth. You're going to have to live righteous and you have to stay in the goodness of God. If you want the fruit of the Spirit to happen in your life. Now let me tell you, let me warn you something. People in hell have not lived with the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, there's a lot of people with no self-control at all that are in the flames right now. And it's serious. Oh, it's serious. Don't go there. The Bible says, look at Romans 11, 22. The goodness and the severity of God. Good toward you if... You continue in it. It's not up to God whether or not you live in the goodness of God. It's up to you. You see, it's not up to God whether you make heaven or you make hell. He paid the price. It's up to you. Choose you this day whom you will serve. It's a choice. I want you to look at verse 9 again of Ephesians chapter 5. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Oh, I heard it last night thundering inside my spirit. We have entered a season of proving. We've entered a season of proving. I hope you're ready. Proving? I looked up the word proving, and here was one of the two that I found in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10. How do you prove what is acceptable to the Lord? Well, you've got to live in His goodness. You've got to live righteous, and you've got to love the truth. If you don't love those things, you're not going to be able to prove what is even acceptable unto the Lord. Maybe you haven't recognized it. You live in a country and a world that seems to not know whether God approves of certain things. People are telling us some crazy ideas that God is approving of, but we're supposed to prove. What does this word proving mean? Write this down. I want you to get this. Proving means to test, to approve. To test, to approve. Now, I thank God for technology because I I leverage it to help you and I out. And I looked at this, and this word proving is not put in English as proving, but the Greek word, the exact same Greek word, is actually used 23 times in your New Testament. 23 times. So the translators, for whatever reasons, and some of them are good or whatever, I won't get into that, but they didn't want to use the word proving. But I thought to myself, and I always think this, if I have something rumbling around in my spirit, like we've entered a season of proving, there better be Bible to back this up. And my friend, there's more Bible than we have time to look at today to back up the fact that we are in the season of the proving of the Lord. 
This is translated in other places, in case you're wondering, test. In another place, it's translated examine. A couple of places, it's, it says examine. Such as 1 Corinthians, where it says examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. It says prove yourself. It's the exact same word. Test to approve. It also is translated try. It's also translated allow. In that scripture, it says God allowed. He proved us and counted us worthy to be his ministers. Wow. We're in a season of proving. Now, I want you to think along this line. When someone creates an invention, let's say you create a product that you want to sell to the public. One of the first things you have to do after you have the idea and you create it and all those things and have a patent for it, right, all that. One of the first things you really want to do, though, is test it to see if it works. And your testing is to, in a way, figure out if there's anything faulty with your design. But the main purpose of the test and the proving is to make sure that it's approved. Well, when I think about this, God is the creator and his greatest creation is you. When you consider the human body and everything that's gone on in the time you've been here this morning to keep you breathing, it's pretty amazing that God has put so much into you and I. Well, he's done this, and then he gave his son. He became a human, and he died for us. Think of this for a minute. This is why we celebrate Christmas, because he came and died for us. You know this. But all that's great, all that's wonderful, but then he wants to come and prove to test us, to approve us. Now, a lot of people, when they hear about God testing them, examining them, trying them, they get nervous. But I'm talking to you about making this thing count. And I want to repeat what I started out with. If you're going to make this life count, you're going to have to make it through the proving, the testing to approve of the Lord. And he's going to test you. One of the men that went to hell, I've referred to him a couple times already this morning, Howard Pittman is his name. Doesn't mean I agree with all of his doctrine, but I'll tell you one thing, he did go to hell. He did visit with the king. He stood before him, told him of all the good works. I mentioned some of his good works too. He said, I was telling the king all of these works, and he was quiet. And then when I finally exhausted myself telling all my good works, here's what Jehovah said to him. Your faith is dead. Your works are an abomination unto me. He said, it couldn't be that the Lord's talking to me. It couldn't be. Well, because he had prayed the Lord would extend his life, the Lord granted him that. And the Lord said, you're going back, but you're going to share five points. And one of the points he was sharing is this point I'm talking to you about today, the proving of the Lord. The proving, the testing of the Lord. You see, anyone can talk a good game. To refer to my, in the offering message, basketball analogy, anyone can hit a free shot in practice when no one's booing you or yelling at you. Right? There's no pressure then. You're looking at me kind, kind of like you're depressed. You shouldn't be because God is testing you to approve you. And if you run from the proving of the Lord, there's no hope for you. Because the Lord wants to test you right now to make sure he can stamp approved on you when you take your last breath. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. You see, when you take your last breath on this planet, it's too late to make it count then. You're going to make it count now. So when someone creates something, they will test it, right? Are you following this Analogy. I have to explain analogies and illustrations nowadays because people don't seem to understand them. But here's the point. The Lord is going to test us for approval. Up front, you got to know something. It's going to take a renewed mind 
if you're going to prove the will of God. It's going to take a renewed mind. Say a renewed mind. mind. Romans 12, 2. Let's look at this, a familiar verse. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. There's that word. You may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? This tells you and I something that you ought to notate. The will of God will sound outrageous to an unrenewed mind. So there will be times that you're just minding your own business, going through life, doing your own thing, and you'll come up on a scripture, and it will almost sound outrageous to you. Such as one I already covered, bring ye the tithes. How am I going to have more, Lord, if I bring you 10%? See, the natural mind kicks in in reasoning and fights against that. I get it. I've had that thought cross my mind several dozen times in my life. But I'm more rooted in the Word with a renewed mind thinking according to the Word of God. And I know this is God's will. God's will is not to increase me so I can just hoard it for myself. When I increase, God wants to know, do you realize that I gave you the breath so you could increase? I gave you the ability to get wealth so you could establish my covenant, he said in Deuteronomy. Well, I tell you, the word is so full of our answers, we just got to spend time in it. But you got to heed this warning from this familiar verse. Don't be squeezed into the image of the world. How would I do that, preacher? I love the Lord. Through the way you think. You're going to have to have a renewed mind to be able to prove. Because let me tell you something. God's Proving in your life, him looking and testing your life, he uses the same standard for everyone. But man doesn't do that. See, man looks at you and says, well, I don't know. Do you look like you have money or not? This is real talk. Different people have different mindsets. But a renewed mind doesn't show partiality. A renewed mind says this, hey, we all have this mind, and we're all in charge of renewing it. Oh, he made us brand new. Like we read just the other night. Once we're in Christ, we're new creatures. He made us citizens of heaven. You like that message a little better. You were shouting. I assume. He made us ambassadors of Christ. We ought to shout about those things. But don't you think for one second that he's going to give you citizenship to heaven and an ambassador position for Christ without testing you. He's going to test you. And pressures that are put on you will test you. And if you let this mind slip out of its renewed state, even good men die. Even people that you think are soldiers of the cross that are warriors end up giving up. David came upon a situation that way. I don't have that lined up today, but you ought to read about it when he one day showed up and all of his soldiers' wives and children and goods had been stolen and burned. And his men that had been faithful to him for decades talked about stoning him. The Bible tells us a very interesting piece of information that David encouraged himself in the Lord. You see, there's going to be a time, I face these times as pastor more often than I tell about, where it seems that everyone is against you. You know what you got to do in that moment? Don't give in to the barrage of the thoughts from the enemy. Instead, what you have to do is remind yourself who you are in Christ what you have, and get your mind renewed. It says, according to the Word, here's what the Bible says about me. If you don't do that, even you could fall from your own steadfastness. Listen to my warning today. I'm a man possessed by the Holy Spirit. I don't care what people think. I'm telling you the will of God sounds crazy to people that don't have a renewed mind. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Did you know the Bible doesn't even give us permission to think on what we want to think on? It tells us plainly in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, anytime you see brethren or beloved in the New Testament, you might as well put your name on the Scripture. Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, there's nothing in there about lies. And you dwelling on that? I think one of the most... Alarming things to me is how lies sell. Truth, not that interested in it. Why do you think, I haven't looked, but if I look at the news headlines for our big media outlets, even here in our city, it's going to be all the negative things that have happened this week. 
They're not going to report the positive things. Every once in a while they try to throw one in because I think they even themselves recognize that the bad news is what sells. Have you heard what happened to? You know, I mean, think about it. Even I've been guilty of this. I mean, look, I, you know, you heard about the police chase the other night that I saw. I, I told about it. I immediately told about it. I don't always get to see that. And I didn't, now I get to think about that. I didn't tell very many good things that happened that I saw that week. People do. You see what I'm talking about? It's easy for us to slip into this where we just tell bad things. But the Bible says whatever things are true, honest, just, look at this, pure, lovely, of a good report. Is it a good report? No. Well, why are you thinking on it? Because the Bible says if it's not pure, if it's not lovely, if it's not of a good report, if there's no virtue, power from God, Remember when that woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus and he said, virtue has just left me. It's talking about the power of God. There's no power of God. If there's no praise of the king, then it turns and says, you need to think on these type of things. So I've t- I came from the angle, if it doesn't have that, then I'm not authorized to think on it. I'm going to read it as it says it. Because I was started quoting. I got into quoting there. And I want you to lay your eyes on it. I do have this on the screen. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Some people are already tired of hearing this, see? Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things you're authorized to think on. So if they don't line up with that, Let this be the filter that catches your thoughts. Your car has filters. My house, this place has filters, air filters. Just had a heater guy out this week. One of our heaters started blowing cold air back when it was like 20 degrees at night. And I said, burr. Called the heater guy out. He came out and he changed and he showed me one of the filters. He said, look at that. Man, dust was thick on that sucker. I've been having my mind on other stuff, not changing the filter. you got to change the filter. I said, that's right. He left me a couple filters so I could keep it clean. God left us a filter so that you could keep it clean. And it starts with what you think on. Are you following me? I'm talking about making it count. I'm talking about making it in eternity. I'm talking about this morning, the proving of the Lord. If you think opposite of God and he tests you, you're going to fail. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite (laughs) you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.